Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Steven here and welcome back to another China Phone unboxing and today we're going to have a look at the Ulephone Paris. So while I have pretty good contacts to Ulephone, I was talking with the factory manager, PR manager and they told me something about the Paris, so this is not some high-end flagship. Now if you're into heavily 3D gaming, whatever, then um, this is not a flagship device. So this is some very cheap mid-range smartphone with the MTK6753 and it's actually designed to be quite handy because a lot of people say um, those 5.5 inch phones they're way too big. So Ulephone produced the Paris which is quite small, handy and has some pretty good mid-range specs. Now this phone is very cheap. It's currently 110 euro um, as some kind of sale on eFox but um, if you buy it for 110 euro you don't get all the accessories. So the normal retail price it's 150 euro and actually I think this is a very good price for the Ulephone Paris. So well um, let's stop talking, let's just turn the box around and let's Let's have a look at the specs, right? So here's the back side of the box of the Paris. Unfortunately, there are no specs on there, but basically there's the address of the Ulephone company on there. I actually have never seen that a company just um, puts the address here on the package, but that's pretty nice. So you know, well, the company, it's maybe quite big and they care about the products, at least um, it makes me feel like that. You can see it's the model Paris GPS Wi-Fi 4G. And let me tell you something about the specs, but you can also read them if you click down the link, uh, if if you click the link down below in the description to eFox. So it's a 5 inch phone, it's really kind of small and handy, um, 720p resolution. MTK6753 SOC, it's a 1.3 GHz quad core, sorry, octa core, I'm still drunk from the Oktoberfest. 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB of ROM, and 13 megapixel rear camera, plus a 5 megapixel front shooter. It runs Android 5.1 straight out of the box. I really hope it's 5.1 and not the fake 5.1, just like on the Ulephone B Touch, but let's see. Then we have quad band on GSM, we have dual band on WCDMA, so it's 900 and 2100, the um, most important important frequencies and we have FDD LT frequencies B1, B3, B7 and B20 so that's basically it that are the main specs and now I would say let's go and let's open up the box okay guys there we go this is how the box looks like as you can see a very small and thin box now we can take out here the smartphone and there we go come out of here Ulephone so here we have the Paris we'll just have a closer look at the phone in a second but now I want to check out the accessories so we have here a little cardboard thing to get this out and yeah here we have the accessories so that are basically the main accessories you get when you buy the phone for 110 euro now um, when you buy it for 150 I think there's some additional screen protector and a flip cover included which I personally don't have okay um, so we have here the screen protector so one is on the smartphone this is an additional screen protector so just a normal one nothing special we have here the Ulephone um, quick starter guide or user manual and so far as I can see this is multi-language well it just tells you the basic things some basic things like the keys apps absolutely nothing special in here then um, yeah here we can see all the accessories so it's pretty good that a headset is included but it looks like the same headset I also had on some other phones so the quality will be well yeah um, average too low we can just have a look here at the headset and there we go I hope it's not too bright because everything is white here and well I also um, already recognize this remote control so I've seen that a lot and um, also here the speakers well um, now they have redesigned the speakers remote still looks the same still very lightweight and I guess the quality won't be so good but I will test it later what I like is the flat cable so you can see it's not a round cable so some flat cable that's pretty cool and yeah um, it comes with a microphone you can see here the headphone jack so um, it's a headset you can do also calls with then here we have the USB cable so um, micro USB cable to charge it connected to the computer or whatever looks pretty nice because this is also a flat cable rubberized the USB port some nice um, USB connector, some really nice design. This is also rubberized, not gold plated, but cable quality looks really okay. And there we go, here's the charger. Now, um, says here Ulephone looks really a lot like my Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge charger or Galaxy um, S4 charger, so they all had pretty much the same design. 
But so far as I can see the output, it's 5 volts, 1 amp, there is no quick charging, so yeah, the USB port not 100% straight in. So the charger looks um, kind of cheap, but also keep in mind the phone is very cheap. Charger, well, if it's working good, why not? It's it's bigger than, for instance, the other phone P7000 charger. So um, yeah, um, I will bring you my full review when I've tested the charger, so I can tell you if it heats up or not, but I can definitely confirm with 5 volts and 1 amp output, there is no quick charging on the Ulefone Paris. Now that's everything you can find here inside of the box, comes pretty well packed, but um, that's the basic version without flip cover, without additional screen protector, and comes here in this nice black Paris box. But now let's go and let's have a closer look at the smartphone. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the Ulefone Paris. Now before we have a closer look at everything, um, let me give you a quick roundabout and my first feeling here in my hands. Now regarding the size, it feels absolutely nice. So I just quickly measured it, not too accurate, but it's around 115 millimeters long, 42 millimeters, yeah, it's the width, and around 8 millimeters thick. So that's actually really nice, but it feels even slimmer than 8 millimeters because of the bit curved edges here. So in my hands it feels pretty good. It's actually the perfect size, which I prefer. My S6 Edge, I think it's a little bit bigger, so uh, this is also nice too, but I just don't like those big smartphones anymore because I really um, travel a lot and big smartphones are not so important for me. So yeah, perfect size. So for iPhone 5 users, something like that, it's just a little bit bigger, but feels pretty good here in my hands. And also the build quality at the first, yeah, first look, the first feeling is pretty good. So um, yeah, that's the front. We have here a nice display. Actually, it's not so nice because it looks like the display of the Ulefone B Touch 1. Now, the viewing angles are not so good in my opinion, so I don't want to rant on that, but um, most people won't even recognize that, but I somehow, I get now a feeling for those displays, and it feels a little bit too yellow. So it was just the same like with the Ulefone B Touch 1. Sometimes the white tones, they look a little bit yellow. I'm not sure if I can catch it on camera with the white balance, but in my eyes, this sometimes it, it looks just yellow. I mean, we can open up the browser, so I I can just check this out here. Um, for sure the camera it will look different and the viewing angles are quite okay but here maybe you can see it so it looks quite yellow. Now um, for me it looks really white. Here maybe in the camera yellow again, here more white. So a display is really not the best but at least it's quite sharp. It's in 720p display on 5 inches so regarding the sharpness it's very good. But um, regarding the colors I'm not so happy right now. But what I like is that we have capacitive touch buttons. We have um, quite small bezels on the left and right side, so the bezel size um, looks very good to me. The capacitive touch button, so that home button here at the bottom, it lights up. And left and right we have some small dots, which are hard to see right now, but for some reason they don't light up. So I think just the button here in the middle lights up at the first look. At the top we have an earpiece. Then here um, we have light and proximity sensor, really hard to see right now, and here front facing camera. So now let me quickly show you the thickness of this device here. And um, I've measured it with a crappy Werner caliper, so some plastic caliper, and it showed 8 millimeters. So well, you can find the exact dimensions down below, but so far it feels pretty slim. All the buttons are located on the right side of this device here, so we have here the power button and volume rockers. Feels pretty good, the buttons are in there very stiff, and the power button also feels really good to press. Now um, the back cover is removable, that's a nice thing, because um, usually on those phones with metal thing, and which are very slim, you can't remove the back cover, but here you can, and well, as I've said before, it comes with a metal frame around the device, just like the Ulefone B Touch or Ulefone B Touch 2, so um, basically very similar design, but um, still removable back cover and um, a different camera design here, as you can see on the back side. So here we have the Ulefone logo, and here at the top we have the camera. So basically we have here a single LED flash, so no dual tone, just a single one, very basic, and here we have the rear camera. And this is also metal, yeah, feels like it, and um, actually really nice, so I like the look of it, and it looks absolutely cool in my opinion, but um, as you We'll probably see it comes a little bit out of the device and makes it thicker and hit the top we have some yeah rounded edge around it okay um yeah at the top we have the micro usb port to charge it or to connect it to the computer and we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack then we can also turn it around and here at the bottom we have um the single speaker so now we have a single speaker grid that looks pretty good not some fake dual one so people can rant about it and also 
also here we have the bottom microphone. So far as I can see, this is the one and only microphone, well, as always on such low budget phones. Okay, um, that was basically a quick roundabout and I think I've showed you here everything. And now let's quickly remove the back cover. So you can do it right over here at the bottom. So just go in there with your fingernail and wow, the back cover, it's just like on the B Touch, it comes um, off pretty hard. So um, it's very stiff and fits tight, but that's also pretty good. So dust can't really enter the phone. Okay, um, the battery is removable, so we can just quickly take it out and have a look at the battery. Now, regarding the battery capacity, well, um, the battery says 2250 milliamp hours, which equals 8.55 watt hours. Okay, now um, 3.8 volts, so I have to measure that, but the battery looks kind of slim. I mean, looks bigger than the Yumi Hammer battery, so that was 1750. Okay, this could be true, so I think Ulephone, yeah, um, that's correct. And Ulephone also did a battery test on the B-Touch with um, a battery testing machine. I would be really glad if they do it on the Paris 2, just um, because um, if the battery capacity is real and you guys also show that, um, people will buy the phone, you know? And you see a very thin one, but I will definitely measure it. Okay, um, then let's have a look here on the internal and here you can see Ulephone model Paris, here the sticker with the IMEI numbers. At the bottom we have one of the antennas and a 3D sound speaker. Now, yeah, the speaker is actually, I think, here or maybe the whole part here. Not really sure, I have to check it out from the inside then. Um, here we have um, dual SIM slots, so SIM 1 and SIM 2. Both are micro SIM card slots. And we have here also a micro SD card slot, so to extend your Intel memory, 32 gigs, no problem. Also, I guess 64 and even 128 if you formed it correctly. Um, we have here, for instance, the antenna. Um, it's not labeled, but I don't know which antenna. But anyway, here at the top is an antenna, here's another antenna, and here once again the camera. So this is basically how it looks from the inside. Um, a lot of screws here along the frame, inside made out of plastic, frame made out of metal, and um, the front, the glass, feels pretty okay right now, but I can't say anything right now um, if it's scratch resistant or not, but we'll definitely test this in the full review. Okay guys, so that's basically it here from the outside, and now I will just, yeah, start it, and then we'll have a look at some benchmarks and the system UI. So there we go, boys and girls. We're now here in Android 5.1 on the Ulephone Paris, and as we can see, it comes with the stock launcher, but it also comes with some different launchers. So basically, um, it's pre-customized, but you can also choose the stock launcher, and this would be the customized launcher. So with one click, you can give your phone a different look, a different theme. Well, I just don't like that kind of launcher because it also gets rid of the app drawer. I just like to use the stock launcher, which I really like more. But there are also different themes you can download. So Ulephone wants to make some easy customization. I mean, it's okay. I, I don't care about this. At least there is absolutely no bloatware on the smartphone. Good job, um, Ulephone, sorry, because um, they don't put um, any third-party apps on there. So just the Ulephone browser. It's only a shortcut to the Ulephone website, but no chunk except of the other launcher, but that's basically it. Okay, um, we can just have a quick look at the settings. So when you're in the settings, it just looks um, like the normal settings, absolutely nothing special in here. We have Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth, and yeah, um, the usual stuff in here. So far, Wi-Fi seems to be average, not too good, not too bad, but I get here full signal to my router, which is in the next room, so that's pretty good. And we can have a look at the storage. Now it comes with 16 gigabytes, and this is really straight off the box, just with three applications installed, and you get 9.8 gigabytes usable. One big petition, that's also very good. I've now noticed that also the back of the uh, menu button um, lights up, but just very slight. So this could definitely be better. Okay, let's see um, the memory consumption of the ROM so far when we just unpacked it. And we have, yeah, 50% used, quite common, so 1.1 gigabyte is still free, but there's absolutely no bloat on the smartphone. Also, it supports free finger screenshots, and what do we have here? Yeah, double tap to wake up, that's what a lot of people use, and also, um, yeah, snap photo, flip to mute, or pick up call. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, um, GPS in here, multi-account, so the usual stuff, so nothing special, just basic gestures, and that's what we can find here in the settings. Okay, um, then I would say I will now just do quickly some benchmarks, or maybe we can have a quick look at the camera. Now, that's the front-facing camera, which is nice and wide-angle. You see the face detection works pretty good. In, out, in, smile, fuck you. Um, yeah, it's, it looks actually pretty nice, so... 
Um, regarding wide angle and colors, I like it, it looks good. We can also switch to the rear camera, and what I've noticed so far, I've just tried it indoors, um, the shutter, okay, now it was quite okay, but sometimes the shutter was really slow. So um, I will tell you in the review um, if it's really that slow or if, yeah, um, to see how it works then. Okay, um, let's go back here to the menu. So that was the camera. Front facing camera looks really nice. Rear camera, not so fancy, but um, you will see the samples and everything in the full review. Okay, yeah, basic apps here pre-installed, and now I would say let's do some benchmarks. You see it also comes with the Google Play Store, so I just downloaded on Tutu, and now we're actually ready to go and run the benchmarks. Oh yeah, so the benchmarks are finished, and let's have a closer look at the result. Now we almost get 34,000 points in Antutu, which is very good, um, at least for the MTK6753, and 64-bit um, support um, is enabled, as you can see, and in the ranking, yeah, we're somewhere here under the Galaxy Note 4. Well, um, it says non-verified because there was some problem with an internet connection at the end. Now here you can see um, Android 5.1, 64-bit, so we can see here 720p display resolution, MTK6753. Um, 1,928 megabytes of RAM, 8 cores, it clocks from 300 up to 1,300 megahertz, and we have the Mali T720 GPU. 13.3 megapixel rear camera, 8.3 megapixel front-facing camera, and just the basic sensors in there, like accelerometer, um, light sensor, and proximity sensor. Okay, so not too fancy, but the score is quite decent. We can have a look at Geekbench 3, it has 628 points and 2,800 almost multi core score which is also quite okay. Here once again Android 5.1, um, almost 1.9 gigabyte um, memory and well that's basically it here in Geekbench. We can also have a quick look at CPU set. First of all um, the system on chip and there we go. So here once again um, it's the 8 core and you can see um, all the cores working. Um, yeah currently we have almost full battery so nothing is throttling. Scaling governor interactive. Um, here's the device info. It says it's 720p screen density 320 dots per inch but shows here as always wrong screen size. Um, here you can see usable RAM but it shows less than um, actually the internal so um, this is not really correct right now. Here system Android 5.1 and yeah no root access so it does not come pre-rooted like other phones. Um, yeah um, battery nothing in here but here thermal so the temperature I'm now using the device for yeah a couple of hours also the benchmarks were just running and it did came up to 42 degrees maximum so that is looking good so far. And here the sensors, so accelerometer, proximity and light sensor working, but really not many sensors in there. So just the basic stuff, no gyroscope, and that's it. What I really liked is that um, stage fright, it's fixed here in this ROM, not quite common on the most China phones, but finally the software is fixed, so this is really safe. And I can definitely confirm that band 20 is also in there, so band 7, band 3, band 1 for 4G LT, dual band on 3G, and um, yeah, we also have quad band on GSM. Alright, so that's basically it. So that's everything we can find in here. So just the basic benchmarks, a quick look here through the system. So far I can't tell you so much. I now want to measure the battery, use the device for a couple of days, um, yeah, bring you a GPS review, pictures, you know how it works. So stay tuned for my full review of this device here. So far I can say it looks absolutely awesome. So I really like such small devices, thin with metal frame, nice build quality. So if it doesn't overheat or has some um, battery problems like the Ulephone B Touch 2, um, which some users reported, then I'm really happy with this device. And for the low price of 110 without the useless accessories, it's a really nice bargain. Okay guys, then thank you so much for watching and the review will come soon. So stay fresh and bye bye.